Chapter 22 Lost Naruto and Hinata had been married. It was now mid-April. Hinata was at the five-month mark. Naruto had already hired on a contractor to build another room for the twins. Hinata's pregnancy was proceeding normally. However, Hiyashi's condition was worsening. Sakura could not perfect the jutsu she needed to save him. She couldn't find the parasite inside his body to destroy it. No matter how many times she looked, she couldn't find it in his bloodstream. Hiyashi had been bedridden for a week now, and nothing Sakura did could ease his suffering. Hanada and Hanabi made frequent visits with Naruto to see him, often visiting two to four times a day. Hiyashi was barely conscious. Sakura did all she could to ease his pain. Acupressure, aromatherapy, nothing could ease his pain. It was like he was slowly fading, like a candle in the gentle spring breeze. It was on a visit to Hiyashi's bed that Hinata felt her first kick from the twins. It took her by surprise. Hiyashi forced himself to sit, even though barely moving sapped his energy. He gathered his family to his side and he held them. Hinata, you've grown strong. I know you'll be a great mother. I feel comfortable, leaving the clan in your hands. I know you'll lead the Hyuga into a strong and shining future. Always know that you have Naruto, Hanabi and Neji. They will always be your support. Let me feel my grandchildren. Hanada lifted her shirt to reveal her bulging stomach. She had put on a little weight from her twins, but she still looked great. Hiyashi ran his hands around her stomach and he smiled. He could feel the baby's kick. He closed his eyes and he withdrew his hands, turning to Hanabi. Little Hanabi, you'll grow to be a strong shinobi, just like your older sister. I want you to always be by her side, supporting her. Promise me you'll never fight with her. Promise me you'll always be her support, along with Naruto. Hanabi smiled and she kissed her father's cheek in promise. Hiyashi then turned to Neji. Neji, your father would be proud of you. You are easily the strongest ninja in our clan. I want you to help Hanada run the clan. The elders will never allow the branch family to be combined with the main house. Please do all you can to help the clan. Do it for me, for your father and for your clan. Hiyashi then turned to Naruto. I gave you my daughter because I approve of you. You've turned into a fine young man. Minato would be proud of you. I'm sure both he and Jiraiya are smiling down on you. I have no doubt that you'll be Hokage one day. Be Hinata's strength. Protect her, this village, your children. Protect everyone. I know you can do it. Akatsuki will come after you and your children. Be strong, because your strength comes from your unwavering courage and optimism. Hiyashi then lay back down and he closed his eyes. I'd like to rest for a while. Please come back in an hour. Sakura will be coming by to give me my painkillers then. Hanada stood up off the bed and she took Naruto and Hanabi by the hand. Let him sleep. Let's go have some lunch. I have a craving for barbecue beef. Naruto laughed. Hanada was starting to get cravings. She was not experiencing morning sickness as much, and she seemed to be happier and more content. Naruto was pleased to see her happy again. They left the Hyuga compound and they went into town. They stopped by the steakhouse in the city square and they smiled seeing Choji and Ino there. The Uzumaki family joined them in their meal. Hanada was very hungry. It was like her babies were sapping all of her energy. She was eating a lot more than a normal pregnant woman. Sakura attributed it to the effects of the Kayubi chakra from the developing twins. Ino eventually finished her food and they talked for a while. So how does it feel being married Hanada? Ino asked leaning her chin into a bent hand. Hanada spoke between bites of food. She seemed more focused on the meal than on the conversation. It's great. I feel complete. Naruto and I are bound body, mind and soul. She said and she swallowed a large piece of beef. Eventually she pushed the plate aside and she wiped her lips clean. She was feeling content. Choji then paid for their food. Let me get this. Consider it a late wedding gift. Naruto laughed and he squeezed Hanada's hand. He then whispered into her ear. Let's go back and see if your father is awake. Let's bring him some food. Hanada smiled and she nodded. We have to be going. Thank you for the meal. She said and they stood up, took their to-go order and headed back to the Hyuga compound. Sakura was waiting for them. She had a sad expression on her face. Hey, we need to talk. Hanada's cheerful expression faded and she looked down. Sakura didn't even give her a chance to speak. I found out where the parasite is hiding. It's in his brain. There's no way I can destroy it without killing him. He's in his last moments. Hanada, Hanabi, Naruto, he wants to speak to you all, right now. Hanada rushed past Sakura, tears flowing from her eyes. 
Hanabi and Naruto were a half step behind her. Hiyashi was breathing deeply, laboriously. Neji was holding his left hand, his eyes closed in ritualistic prayer. Hanada took her father's right hand and she cried. Hiyashi opened his eyes slowly and he spoke in a hoarse raspy voice. I don't have much longer. Hanada, Hanabi, Naruto, Neji, listen to my final words. I know the four of you will be a strong family. Neji, help Naruto keep this village safe. Akatsuki will eventually come looking for Naruto and his children. Don't let them have the Kayubi. Hanada, you're as beautiful as your mother. Be a great mother, I know you will be. Hanabi, grow into a strong, thoughtful young woman. You'll be as beautiful as your sister one day. Naruto, watch over my girls, protect them, I never got a chance to thank you. So, thank you for everything. Now if you'll excuse me, I've grown quite tired. Please allow me to rest for just a few moments. Hiyashi's voice trailed off. Neji and Hanada felt him breathe his last. Hanabi threw herself at Hiyashi's now lifeless body. He had passed on. Silently, both Naruto and Hanada hugged the young girl. Hanabi loved her father more than anyone else. They stayed there for a long time, until Sakura came in with a pair of medic ninja, and they carried Hiyashi's body away, to prepare him for burial. Hanada cried silently into Naruto's sleeve, and he held both of the girls close. They had lost their father. Naruto cried with them, and they eventually went home. They had to press onward and not look back. Hash 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 chapter 23. Heavy rain the funeral was set for a week from the day of death. Hiyashi had passed, and a profound sadness was felt throughout the entire village. Hanabi was inconsolable. No matter what, she would not leave her room. She was refusing to eat and her sobs could be heard within a mile radius. Hanada had tried everything to cheer her up, but to no avail. Hanada was sad too of course, but she had to be strong, both for the Hyuga clan and for her little sister. The sun rose behind an overcast sky. Rain had begun to fall. Soft at first, then turning into a downpour. Everyone gathered in the funeral hall. Hanada was in the front row with her little sister, and Naruto was by both of them. He sat in between them, holding one of their hands in each of his. Tsunade, as Hokage, was preceding the ceremony. As you all know, Hiyashi Hayuga has passed away. We are gathered here today to honor his life, his accomplishments and his memory. Those who wish to share their thoughts, please join the family in the front row. Slowly, Neji, Tenten, Kurunai and Kakashi moved to the front row to be seated with Naruto and his family. First up to the podium was little Hanabi. Her father had been cut down in his prime by a virus, and she was now left without a mother or a father. With tears in her eyes, she spoke. My father may not have been E. Veriwan's favorite person, but he was still a member of this village. He was a shinobi of Konoha, and he was family to everyone. He was a strong leader, a great father, and a great man. I don't want to see his name tarnished. I want everyone to remember him for what he did for the clan, for the village. Please, be nice to my daddy. Hanabi was only 11. She stepped off the podium and she blew her nose on a handkerchief. Next up to the podium was Hanada. Naruto wiped a tear from his eye as he saw his wife in tears. Hanabi had burrowed her face into Naruto's shoulder. He wrapped his arm around the girl and he looked at Hanada, still crying as she spoke. My father was well known through the village as a strong and just clan leader. He was a strong leader, never showing fear, never showing hesitation. He was the one who protected the secret of our most powerful trait, our Byakugan. He protected me when I was just a child, and when I was kidnapped by the Cloud Shinobi. He may have changed, he may have been harsh to me, but I know why he did it. It was to prepare me for the future. I'm about to be a mother. As the next head of the Hyuga, I have much to learn. I hope I can be half the leader my father was. Hanada sobbed for a brief moment and she stepped down, wiping her eyes and she sat down next to Naruto. She too buried her face in his shoulder and she cried. Naruto held both of the Hyuga sisters close to him. Next to the podium was Kurunai. Hiyashi and I disagreed on a lot of things, especially when it came to Hanada. He was harsh, but he did it because he wanted Hanada to be stronger. He was a strong leader. Everything he did for his daughters was to prepare them for the future. I think he was a fine leader, a great shinobi. His memory will not be forgotten. He will always be in our hearts, and in our memories. Everyone gave Kurunai a round of soft applause, and she stepped away from the podium. Kakashi stepped forward and he closed his eyes. When he opened them, his visible right eye was filled with sadness and tears. 
Hiyashi was the epitome of strength. He was a fierce fighter, a just leader and a dear member of the Konoha family. He was a good man, and he will be missed. Kakashi's short eulogy made a hard impact on those gathered. Even the elders of the Hyuga clan were silently weeping. Naruto was the last to speak. He gently stood up and he walked to the podium. He scanned the crowd with his eyes before speaking. Hiyashi and I were always at odds. He said I wasn't good enough to have Hanada. But that changed, when he saw how happy his daughters were. I used to hate him for everything he did, but shortly before our wedding, we made peace. In the short time we had together, he was like the father I always wanted. Naruto's voice cracked and he broke into tears at this point. He continued through sobs and sniffles. He made me happy, as he walked Hanada down the aisle to me. As many of you know, Hanada and I will be parents in just a few months. He never will see his grandchildren's smiles, and that is what hurts me the most. I wanted to see his happy face when Hanada handed him his grandson and granddaughter in just four months. I wanted used to be a big happy family, but now, because of a freak parasite, he's gone. He will be missed, not only by Hanada, Hanabi in the village, but by me as well. Even the weather is sad, he said and he tried to regain his composure, managing to stop his tears. As he sat back down, Hanada kissed him and she nuzzled his neck, whispering. That was beautiful. Naruto hugged her close to him and he sobbed gently. Eventually, Tsunade took the podium once more. We will miss Hiyashi Hayuga. Now, will those who have volunteered as pallbearers please take our family member to his final resting place? On cue, Naruto, Neji, Kakashi and Lee stood up. Each of them took a corner of the coffin that contained Hiyashi's body and they lifted it. As the four young men passed by each row of the audience, a white rose was thrown into the open casket that contained the body. They carried it to the graveyard where they lowered the coffin into the grave that had been dug. Kotetsu and Genma then started to shovel dirt onto the coffin. The rain continued to pour from the sky. Naruto rolled his head back and smiled. Dad, Hiyashi, watch over us. We'll make you proud. Naruto silently asked for strength and he squeezed Hanada's hand. Hanabi was still crying, but Hanada had regained her composure. After everyone had paid their final respects to Hiyashi, Hanabi stayed behind at the grave. Naruto called for her but she didn't answer. Naruto and Hanada then went home. A few moments later, Konohamaru came to sit next to her and he talked to her. How are you holding up? He asked and Hanabi sniffled before speaking. Not good. My daddy is dead. She stated matter of factly and she buried her face in her hands. I lost my dad, my uncle and my grandpa too. I know your pain. Hanabi shook her head. You don't know anything, she said and Konohamaru smiled. I do. You feel like it's the end of the world, like nothing else matters. Like you just want to die too. I thought that when Tsunade took over as Hokage after Grandpa died, that everyone would forget him. But he's in all of our hearts. Hanabi, your father lives on in your heart, and in your memories. He may be gone from the living, but he's still a part of you. You still have Hanada and Naruto, and if you want, you can have me too. So cheer up, you're not alone. He flashed a wide grin and Hanabi cracked a slight smile and she wiped her eyes. Thanks, you're right, I'll keep my head up. Can we be friends? Konohamaru smiled and he laughed. Course we can, let's get you back home and out of this rain first. Looks like Naruto went home. Mind if I walk you? Hanabi smiled and she stood up. I'd like that, at least I won't get bored this way. Hanabi brushed off her wet clothes and she started to walk with Konohamaru to her house. They talked, laughed and smiled. Hanabi was glad to have someone she could relate to. Naruto and Hanada were sitting on the swing in the front yard, watching the rain. When Konohamaru saw Naruto he turned a slight shade of pink and he rubbed the back of his head. I better get home, he said and he smiled at Hanabi and he turned and ran in the opposite direction. Naruto laughed, the boy had always been his rival. Hanada stood up, and then she giggled. Looks like Hanabi made a new friend. Let's go inside and have hot cocoa. Hanada set the teapot to boiling and they gathered around the fireplace. The rain had stopped and the sun was starting to peek through the cloud cover. After a few moments, the teapot shrieked and they sipped at their hot cocoa. Although they had suffered a great loss, they were still a family. With family and friends at their side, they could overcome any pain and sadness. They were made stronger, and they were a family. They say time heals all wounds. They were already beginning to heal. Their day ended on a high note as they played hangman and then went to bed. A new day was dawning.
Hash 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 chapter 24. Ceiling conflict spring had come and gone. It was now mid-July. Hanada was in her eight month. Her stomach had swollen and she was now doing very little. The babies in her womb were kicking and turning. It was hard for Hanada to sleep because of all the movement of her twins. It was like they were struggling to escape. Naruto and Neji had added another room onto the house, and the room was furnished with a crib and a small desk. Hanabi was excited to be an aunt, and she did all she could to help Naruto and Hanada. Hanabi and Konohamaru were the best of friends, often training together. Hanada was now head of the Hyuga clan, governing its day-to-day -day affairs. She didn't walk around very much. Her babies were sapping her energy. Naruto handled most of the legwork. He did all he could to help his wife. B.U. T. Today, he was out on a mission to deliver something. Hanada was lying in her bed flipping through a packet of files. One of the elders mentioned that her younger child would probably be sealed at birth. Hanada had confided this to Naruto and Neji, and both of them were against the idea. Hanada, as the leader of the clan, had a choice to make, her child or her position. Hanada was looking for a way around this. There was a knock on her door. Come in. The door opened and Neji and Tenten walked into the room, holding a file. We may have a solution to your problem. Take a look at this. Hanada took the file and she read over it. A smile crossed her lips and she sat up slowly. So all we have to do is make sure my son is born first. Neji nodded. Females of the clan are usually not sealed. If your son is the firstborn, the elders won't call for your daughter to be sealed. Hanada nodded and she lay back down. A sharp pain ran through her body and she gasped softly. Ow, she said and she closed her eyes. How much longer will Naruto be gone for? Neji shrugged and he shook his head. Maybe another hour or so, I think. He was just going to a small village a few miles away. Hanada nodded and she closed her eyes as she felt another wave of pain. Tenten noticed her face contort in pain and Hanada offered her a glass of water, which Hanada drank. Thanks. That pain just came out of nowhere. Tenten smiled and she took Hanada's hand. Why don't you get some rest? You've been working so hard Hanada. Neji and I will take care of the rest for today. I'll call Sakura over to ease your pain. Hanada nodded gratefully and she closed her eyes and she rolled onto her side and she fell into a deep sleep. Neji and Tenten exited the room and they stopped in the hallway. Neji turned to his room and Tenten followed him. Hey, Tenten, I have something to ask you. Mind closing your eyes. Tenten closed her eyes and she smiled as Neji took her hand. Neji slipped a diamond ring onto her finger and he stood up and kissed her. Will you marry me Tenten? Tenten's eyes flew open and she felt the heat rise in her face. Of course I'll marry you Neji. Neji wrapped his arms around her and Tenten embraced her fiancé. Neji then let her go and he took her hand and they went out into the garden. The tomato plants were bearing fruit and the trees were filled with apples. They sat under the oak tree in the center and the watched the clouds. Naruto had just returned to the village from his delivery. The first thing he did was go to see Hanada. He found her asleep in their bed. Not wanting to wake her, he stepped into the shower and he turned the water onto hot. He washed his hair, which was growing long, and then he washed his body. After he rinsed himself off he filled the tub up with water and he sank down into the water, letting his body soak. He closed his eyes and he stayed there for a long time. Eventually he drained the water and he stepped out of the tub. When he dressed and entered his room, he saw that Hanada was still asleep. He kissed her cheek softly and he entered the kitchen to prepare some lunch for the four of them. They had temporarily moved into the Hyuga Manor, so Hanada didn't have to walk more than she had to. Eventually Neji and Tenten re-entered the house. They smelled the food Naruto had prepared and they sat at the table. Naruto had made cinnamon rolls, ramen and red bean soup. The scent of the food wafted throughout the whole house and it roused Hanada from her sleep. She sat up and then gathered her strength before she stepped onto the floor and made her way into the kitchen. Naruto smiled when he saw Hanada and he set four bowls of soup and ramen onto the table and they ate happily. After they had eaten, Hanabi came home from her training session with Konohamaru. The six of them ate cinnamon buns and they sat around talking for a while. Eventually they parted ways and Hanada went back to her bed. She had quelled the pain with some aspirin. Naruto ran out of the house to get some more food. Hanada lay back down in her bed. She rested comfortably for a while, until a sharp pain ran through her stomach. She cried out and she felt a trickle of water come from between her legs. The pain came again and she rolled off the bed and staggered to the door. 
Neji saw her struggling and he hugged her. Are you okay, Hanada? Hanada shook her head and she cried out again. Naruto had just entered the house and he saw Hanada suffering. Hina, what's wrong? Hanada was in tears and she cried out again. My water broke. The babies are on their way. Hash 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 chapter 25. Birth my water broke. Those words rang hollow through Naruto's brain. He froze. He didn't know what to do. He broke out in a cold sweat and he sat on the bed. Neji and Tenten were already reacting. Tenten, go get Sakura, quickly. Tenten nodded and she bolted out of the room. She literally ran into Sakura, who had just come over to visit. Sakura saw the look on Tenten's face and she bolted into the bedroom. She's in labor Sakura. Naruto was gripping Hanada's hand and he stroked her cheek softly. Hanada was in tears as the contractions coursed through her body. Sakura was already ordering people in and out. Hanada then screamed. She was in so much pain. One of the elders came by and his eyes lit up. He entered the room and he moved to take a seat. Hanada glared furiously at him. Get out. We'll tell you what happens. The elder quickly retreated from the room and Naruto closed and locked the door behind him. Sakura then sighed. Neji, Tenten, Naruto, I'm going to need all of you to help. Naruto, make sure she's comfortable. This is going to get really loud, ugly and messy. The four of them nodded and Hanada screamed again. Concerned, Naruto took Hanada's hand and she closed her eyes. Naruto fluffed her pillow and she sat up, legs sprawled. Hanada blushed and she turned her head to the side as Sakura slid off her underwear. Okay, Hanada, you're fully dilated. We're going to begin. Hanada, I'm going to use a little chakra to deaden the nerves in your lower body. That way you won't feel the pain as much. It will wear off in a couple of days. You'll still be able to move, but you won't feel anything. Neji, can you help me find her chakra points? Neji nodded and he used his Byakugan to see Hanada's chakra points. Sakura told Neji what to look for and he pressed three points in her legs. Hanada felt her lower body go numb and she cried out as another wave of contractions hit her. Sakura then smiled at Hanada serenely. All right, Hanada, I want you to push as hard as you can. The babies are ready to be delivered. On the count of three, I want you to push. One, two, three. Hanada heard the three and she forced her muscles to push. She cried out in pain, screaming in agony as the first baby slid down her vagina. She couldn't hold the push for long. Sakura smiled and she sat down. It's okay, I know it hurts. You don't have to do it all at once. Hanada panted and she squeezed Naruto's hand. Naruto responded by giving her a gentle kiss. He then whispered gently into her ear. You're doing great, I love you. Hanada nodded and she gathered her strength and she began to push again. Sakura smiled as she saw the baby coming down her birth canal. It's crowning, just a little more Hanada. Hanada could feel the weight of the child shift and she continued to push. Soon the cry of a newborn child filled the room. Sakura took the child and she examined it. Hanada, congratulations, your firstborn child is a girl. Now let's get your son out. Hanada's face fell and she looked up at Naruto. He nuzzled her neck and she gathered her strength, ready to push her son out into the world. Hanada pushed with all her strength and she cried out in pain. The child slid easily out of her birth canal and she laid her head on the pillow. Naruto kissed her as Sakura wrapped the ba, buys in clean blankets and she handed Naruto a pair of scissors. Cut the cords Naruto. Naruto smiled for the first time since Hanada went into labor. He gladly cut the cords of both his son and then his daughter. Sakura cleaned the children and she handed them to their mother. Hanada looked at her children and tears flowed down her face. My babies, Naruto, they're beautiful. Naruto nodded and he kissed his family. Our babies, Hanada, you did well. Very well. Hanada smiled and she looked up at Sakura. Thank you Sakura. Can we have some time alone now? We have some business to discuss. Neji nodded and he turned on his heel and strode out of the room. Tenten followed. Sakura remained behind long enough to tell Hanada to rest up and then she exited the room as well. Hanada then looked up at Naruto. We have a problem. Since our daughter was firstborn, our son has to be sealed according to the elders. By sealed I mean he's going to be branch family. Like Neji. Naruto shook his head and he spoke firmly. Unacceptable. Sealing is barbaric and wrong. He will not be sealed even if it means I lose my life. Hanada looked down at her children and her eyes filled with tears. Naruto, it's not that simple. We have to follow tradition. Naruto shook his head and he hugged her. Screw the tradition Hanada, you're the head of the clan. 
You can join the branches into a unified clan. Hanada looked up and she nodded. You're right, I can do that. The elders won't like it, but you're right. We can't let our only son be torn away from us. Speaking of which, we have to name our babies. Do you still want to name them the names we picked out months ago? Naruto kissed her and he cracked a wide grin. How does Linda sound for our daughter? Lin for short, Hanada nodded and she stroked her sleeping daughter's soft face. Lindis. I like it. She's our Lindis. I was thinking we should name our son Sorin. Naruto nodded and he kissed her gently. Sorin and Lindis it is. They look so happy sitting there in your arms. Can I hold Lin? Hanada gladly handed Lin to her father and she opened her eyes for the first time. They were white like Hanada's. Hey, I was thinking. We should keep their clan name as Hyuga. I'm just a runt without a clan. At least Hyuga will give them some standing in the village. Hanada nodded and she smiled as Sayorin opened his eyes. They were blue. The babies woke up from their slumber and began to squirm. Lindis looked up at her father and she opened her mouth, showing a toothless smile. Sorin began to cry and Hanada smiled. I think they're hungry. Naruto nodded and he let Hanada feed the babies. After a few minutes the babies were asleep again. A knock came at their door and Neji called out. We need to talk. Naruto led him in and he took a seat on the bed across from Naruto and Hanada. Some suspicious people were found around the village. We don't know who they are or what they want. They're shinobi, but we have no clue what village they're from. You guys need to stay inside the house until we find out more. It's not Akatsuki, but it's still better to be safe than sorry. Naruto nodded and he cast a glance at Hanada. We will. Keep us updated. Neji nodded and he stood to rise. Just then, Tenten burst into the room. She was drenched in sweat and she was panting. Big trouble. We have shinobi from the cloud village here. Hanada immediately sat up and she handed her children to Naruto. What? They didn't learn last time. We're not giving them the Byakugan. Tenten shook her head. No, it's not that. They want to speak to Tsunade. Word is, Sasuke has killed Orochimaru, Itachi, and has now joined Akatsuki to take revenge on the village. Naruto then stood up. Sasuke joined Akatsuki, what the hell, I need to go see Tsunade. Naruto was already bolting out of the room. Hanada asked Neji to watch their children and she was right behind her husband. Naruto was already in the H. Okage residence. Tsunade, is it true Sasuke joined Akatsuki? Tsunade had a very painful expression on her face and she nodded. She looked like she hadn't slept in days. Yes, Sasuke has sworn revenge on Konoha. It turns out that the third Hokage ordered Itachi to finish off his clan. However, Itachi couldn't kill his only brother. Only a few people in the village knew this secret. I was not aware of it until I found a file three days ago. The third feared the Uchiha clan would rebel against the village. A story passed down in my family may shed some light though. You all know I'm the granddaughter of the first Hokage. Well, he fought against the founder of the Uchiha clan. His name was Madara Uchiha. Turns out, He's still alive and he's actually the true leader of Akatsuki. Anyway, long story short, Madara was Itachi's accomplice in the Uchiha massacre and he's the one who told Sasuke the truth. Naruto, it's not safe for you here. I want you, Hanada and your children to be extra careful. Sasuke knows you both. If he attacks the village, Naruto, it's up to you. You're the only one strong enough to take on Sasuke. Even I wouldn't stand a chance. Jiraiya taught you everything he could. We know you learned about the sage mode. Use that, it will save you, your family and this village. Naruto took this all in and he nodded. I'll protect this village with my life. Even if it's from Sasuke. But I don't want to kill him. Maybe I can talk him out of this. Tsunade chuckled and she nodded. Maybe so. Now get going. I'm sure you and Hanada are both quite tired. Get some rest. They both nodded and left the building. Hanada then asked a question. What's sage mode? Naruto laughed. It's a secret kind of training I learned while I was with Jiraiya. Naruto smiled and he took her hand and they walked back to the Hyuga Manor. They retired to their room and they slept with their children. Night fell and the village grew silent with slumber. The threat of invasion was real. Things could get really bad, really fast. Hash 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 chapter 26. Mother word of the birth of the Hyuga twins was circulating around the village for a long time even after they were born. Now in the middle of August, Naruto, Hanada, Lin and Sorin were now home in the Uzumaki household. Hanada hadn't told the elders about the children yet. However, there seemed to be whispering amongst the village and the other clans. 
No doubt word had got to the Hyuga elders that Lindis was the firstborn. Hanada's body had returned to normal following the discharge of the used placenta, and she looked great as ever. The babies were healthy and they were happy. It was on August 17th that it happened. A knock came at the door of the Uzumaki residence. It was around noon that the visitor arrived. Naruto, Hanada and their children were sitting in the living room. Naruto stood to open the door. In the doorway were Neji, Sakura and Tenten. Each of them had a different expression on their face. Sakura looked happy, but Neji and Tenten looked discouraged and upset respectively. Naruto stepped back to let them in and they took a seat opposite Naruto and Hanada. Sakura looked at the sleeping babies. They looked so happy in their play pen. Sorin opened his eyes and he rolled onto his back to look up at Sakura. His blue eyes shone with a hint of energy. His elder sister was still asleep. Sakura then looked at Naruto. You guys are a happy family now. The whole village is buzzing about the news. It's been almost a month now. Have you guys thought of having the children blessed? Hanada nodded and she smiled. We're actually doing it tomorrow. We're having a party and everything. Sakura nodded and she knelt down to pick up Sorin from his play pen. At this point, Lindis began to rouse from her sleep. She opened her lavender eyes and she looked up at her mother. Hanada stooped to pick up her child and she held the little girl in her arms. Neji then spoke up as Naruto took. Lindis from her mother. Hanada, we have a problem. The elders are still calling for Sorin to be sealed. He's a Hyuga by blood and by name. Even if he can't use Byakugan, he's a Hyuga. What do you plan on doing? Hanada had moved into the kitchen to make tea for them. She came out of the kitchen with a smile on her face. I already decided what we're going to do. I'm going to join the houses. And Sorin can use Byakugan. We've already had Sakura do a genetics test on him. He has the ability to use it, it's just different than mine or yours or Hanabi's. The Kayabi's power infused with our children's own chakra, channeling it into a powerful energy. When she finished speaking, she smiled at Neji, whose jaw was on the floor. You're going to join the houses. Are you mad? Do you have any clue how that would make you look as a leader and as a Hayuga? The elders will never allow it. Naruto was snickering. It was my idea. Hanada and I have done our research. The clan used to be joined at its creation. It was because of the first Hayuga leader that it was split. He feared that the weaker of the Hayuga would corrupt the clan, so he created the sealing jutsu and he sealed his younger brother. That was the birth of the branch family. Hanada and I think it's in the best interest of the clan. The elders will have to kill me before they even lay a finger on our children. Neji sipped at his tea and he fought to regain his composure. When he had, he spoke again. If they elders decline, we'll have a civil war. You seem confident that this will work. You obviously know something we don't. So out with it. Hanada then pulled out an envelope that was in Hiyashi's handwriting. She then opened it and began to read. To my fellow clansmen, in the event that something happens to me, I wish for the main and branch houses to be joined into a unified clan. The next leader will have to be of my blood, and she will implement my wishes. Your leader and friend, Hiyashi Hayuga. Neji chuckled and he laughed. Leave it to Hiyashi to find a way to live from beyond the grave. So, how does it feel being parents? Naruto laughed and so did Hinata. It's great, tiring, but great. These kids fight us to sleep. We have to alternate to feed them at night. Hanada and I are rather tired. But all in all, it's a wonderful feeling. Tenten smiled and she looked at Sakura holding Sorin. He looks just like you Naruto. He has your eyes and even your nose. He's a beautiful baby. Sakura then passed the child to Tenten and Tenten rocked the baby gently in her arms. Sorin closed his eyes and he fell back asleep. Hanada then laid her children back to sleep in their playpen and then she grew serious. Has there been any news on Akatsuki or Sasuke? Neji finished his tea and he nodded. There is actually. Word is Sasuke is targeting Danzo. Danzo was in on the Uchiha massacre. However, he has sworn revenge on the entire village. That means us too. We all have to work together to face him. That's why Tenten and I are getting more intense training from Tsunade and Gai Sensei. We all have to be strong. Sasuke knows all about the twelve of us. We studied together in the academy and we even took the Chunin exam together. He knows us, so we'll be his main threat. Naruto, you and Hanada are strong, but we all have to work together. Naruto nodded, together we can overcome anything. Neji, I know Sasuke knows us, but I have some tricks up my sleeve that even Hanada doesn't know about yet. And Hanada has grown strong enough to match me. I'm not worried about us. It's those two I'm worried about. 
Lindis and Sorin are my children. They hold the power of the Kyubi too. Akatsuki may or may not be able to defeat me to use for their plan, but they can certainly use my babies. And I won't let that happen. I'll die before I let anything happen to Lindis or Sorin. Speaking of which, just what the hell is Akatsuki collecting the biju for anyway? A silence fee. D the room. None of them had the answer. No one knew what they were planning. One thing was certain though. The threat of invasion was real. Hanada then asked a question. What do we know about the members of Akatsuki anyway? Naruto then looked at her and he shrugged. I don't know anything. I only met Itachi and Kisame. But we know nothing about the rest of them. Intel would be nice, but we lost Jiraiya and he knew all about them. Neji sighed and he stood up. We can't just sit here twiddling our thumbs. Someone out there knows all about them. So we have to find out ourselves. Naruto nodded, followed by Hinata, Tenten and then Sakura. Just then, Katetsu knocked on the door. Naruto, we just received word that we found Kashina. Naruto was at the door and he opened it. My mother. Katetsu nodded and he handed Naruto an envelope and then left. I didn't know my mother was still alive. Hinata, we have to go and see her, right now. Hinata nodded and she looked at her friends. Sorry about this. We need to go. We'll see you all at the blessing party tomorrow. We're having it here. Could you let the others know? Tenten nodded and she handed the babies to their parents. Naruto took Lindis and Hanada held Sorin in her arms. After their friends had left, Naruto locked the front door. He left a note for Hanabi on the door and a key under the mat. Where is she Naruto? Hanada asked her husband and Naruto ripped open the envelope and he read it before answering. She's in a mountain cabin halfway to the sound village. It'll take us a while to get there. Hanada nodded and she nuzzled her husband. Naruto was sweating profusely. To meet his mother after all these years, it was a shock. The cabin was more than a half day away. Naruto then spotted Hanabi on the way out. The young girl rushed to her sister and her brother. Where are you going? Naruto quickly explained the situation and Hanabi grinned. I'll come with you. Konohamaru can come too right. Ever since her father's funeral, Hanabi and Konohamaru had become inseparable. Naruto nodded and the six of them made their way to the village gate. Naruto was silent and deep in thought. He could still hardly believe that Kashina was still alive. However, he felt he had to go and meet his mother. And that resolution was what propelled him to push forward, to the sound village, to his mother, to his past, to his destiny. Hash 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 chapter 27. Grandmother Naruto and his family had begun their trek to the small cabin in the woods. The threat of attack was a possibility. But Naruto was determined to meet his mother. He had so many things to ask her. Why did she leave? Why did she become a recluse? These questions burned into Naruto's brain. He was also aware of the possibility that this could all be an Akatsuki trap, but he had to know for sure, if only to give himself peace of mind. Konohamaru remained at Hanabi's side the entire trek. They had become very close and it made both Naruto and Hanada happy to see that she had made such a wonderful friend. They stopped for a break near the border of the sound country. They didn't have to go very far into the country itself. But Naruto was not willing to put any of his family members in harm's way. As they rested, they talked. Hanabi and Konohamaru talked amongst themselves, while Hanada and Naruto fed their twins. The babies had slept peacefully through the entire journey, but now they were awake and active. Naruto smiled at Lindis and the baby looked up at him with her lavender eyes. Naruto held the child in his arms and he closed his own eyes. She's going to be a beautiful child. I bet all the boys will be after her Hina. Hanada gave a slight laugh and she nodded. We'll have to leave it to Sorin to keep them off of her. How much further do we have to go before we reach your mother? Naruto looked around the forest clearing and he smiled. Not too much further. Just another mile or so I think. I want you to be extra careful. Guard our twins well Hina. Naruto then stood up and he gave the signal to keep moving. They entered another clearing after just a few minutes. In the center of the clearing stood a small wood and stone cabin, it was quite large and seemed to be fairly new. It couldn't have been more than a few years old. No moss covered the trees around the cabin. It seemed too perfect, and that feeling made Naruto uneasy. Naruto signaled a stop and he turned to the other members of his traveling party. Wait here, and stay hidden. I'm going to go see if it really is my mother. Don't move until I give the signal. Hanada nodded and she held her children close to her as Naruto emerged from the bushes and he gently rapped on the door twice. At first nothing happened. Naruto couldn't see or hear anything, but after a second knock, a woman's voice called out. 
I'll be there in a minute. I'm dressing. Naruto stood at the door until it opened. When it did, Naruto found himself staring face to face with a woman his height. Her eyes widened and she backed up slightly. Minato. Naruto shook his head and he smiled gently. You must be my mother, Kashino Uzumaki. I'm your son, Naruto. The woman nodded and she backed up further before she spoke. Yes, you look just like your father, Naruto. Naruto smiled and he gave the signal for Hanada and the others to come out of hiding. Kashina saw Hanada and the rest of them and she smiled. You have a family, Naruto nodded and he grinned widely. Yeah, this is my wife Hanada, our sister Hanabi, Konohamaru and our newborn twins, Lindis and Soren. Mom, Naruto then sprung forward and he hugged his mother tightly. Kashina returned the embrace and they parted. They walked to the couch and Naruto carried Lindis in his arms once more. The twins were slumbering again. Kashina went into the small kitchen to make some tea. Naruto looked around the room and he smiled. It was a nice, fairly large cottage. It had a hardwood floor and stucco ceiling. Kashina came back a few minutes later with tea for the five of them. They sipped at their tea, not speaking, as if grasping for a topic to talk about. Naruto eventually spoke. Mom, why did you leave Konoha and go into hiding? Kashina brushed her long hair behind her ear before she spoke. After you were born and your father died sealing the Kayubi, I just couldn't bear to see you torn from me. They took you from me to make certain no one learned what had happened to you. I couldn't bear the pain of losing my only son. So I turned and ran. I left you in the third's care and I ran. I turned my back on my home, my son and on my life as a shinobi. I fled as far as I could. I abandoned you and I regret it. I hope you don't hate me Naruto. Naruto shook his head and he smiled. I never hated you. I always wondered what you were like. What the woman my father married was like. I just wanted to meet you one day and see for myself. Now that we're together, I want you to come home with us, to Konoha. We live in the Uzumaki residence now. I want you back where you belong. Kashina sipped her tea and she smiled. I'd love to come back home with you. I can't believe I'm a grandmother at only 43. Can I hold my grandchildren? Hanada smiled and she handed her babies to Kashina. They woke up at this time and they looked up at their grandmother. They're Hayuga, they're going to be very special children. Kashina mused as she noticed Lindis's lavender eyes. Hanada giggled and she moved to sit next to Kashina. I'm Hayuga, I'm the head of the Hayuga clan. Hanada Hayuga, at your service. Kashina giggled and she put an arm around Hanada. How's Hiyashi? Did he finally retire? Hanabi then looked down and she sighed. Konohamaru and Hanabi then went outside. Naruto could hear Hanabi's sobs. Konohamaru was hugging her. Naruto could see them through the one window and he smiled. Hanada then hugged Kashina. My father passed away a few months ago. He contracted malaria on a mission. We couldn't save him. Hanabi took it quite harshly. Kashina nodded and she smiled. I'm sorry for the loss. Hiyashi was a good ninja. He had a thing for me once, before he met his wife. Naruto laughed and they talked for a long time. Eventually, Naruto rose and he smiled. We should get going mom. It's a half day's walk back to Konoha. Kashina nodded and she stood up. She went into her bedroom and she packed her bag with her essentials. She then slung the bag over her shoulder and she smiled as she came across a box of Minato's special kanai. She stuffed them into the bag and she rejoined her newfound family. I'm ready. Shall we be going? Naruto nodded and he called for the kids to get ready. Konohamaru and Hanabi came back into view and they seven of them started their journey back to Konoha. Naruto felt a profound feeling of happiness in his heart. His mother was still alive and well. Now she was coming to live with them. He was happy. Tomorrow was to be the blessing of the children. It was nearing nighttime. They reached the village about an hour after the sun had set. They returned home quickly and they settled into their beds for the night. Tomorrow was a party, and for the first time in his life, Naruto had his mother. The next day was going to be a good one, and the entirety of their friends and family would be there. Naruto closed his eyes and he slept peacefully with these thoughts in his mind. To be continued.